Hey everybody, it's Ryan. Welcome back to How Farms Work. Today we are here with John and Will, and we are standing in a potato field. So they're going to run us through a little bit on how a potato harvest goes. Uh, myself, I've never seen potato harvesting in person, and I'm looking forward to hearing from these guys what it takes to harvest potatoes. So when do you guys plant the potatoes? Uh, we usually plant potatoes around, probably around the end of March, early April. Okay. It's usually our spring break. And high school. <laughs> spring break. Spring okay. Break. Then, uh, what typically when can you harvest those potatoes? Uh, usually around the first of July. Right after July fourth is is usually the prime prime time to start. So, what kind of rotations go with potatoes? So, usually you can like to follow a grain crop or some kind of some kind of grass or, or usually a cover crop goes in afterwards. But sometimes you can. They'll put melons back out here. A lot, of, a lot of watermelons and fruit growing in this area. Okay. And the best crop to follow, like have potatoes be in front of, is corn because corn puts out a lot of fodder. It will put out a lot of organic matter. Potatoes don't put back much organic matter, and so that kind of they take more out than what they'll give. Oh yeah. Okay. So after you take these out, what do you plant after the potatoes? Uh, what will you guys plant? Yeah, some we'll plant we'll plant a sedan grass, which this this stuff will get six. I've seen it seven foot tall before, and we'll we'll disc it down and plant our, our winter rye and really put a lot back into the soil after potatoes. Okay, mm -hmm. what kind of soil do you guys have on around here? Uh, it's mostly sandy, but it varies. It'll be we have some we call it the black ground, and it is literally a black peat is what what's okay. called. It's it's an old ancient swamp from years and years ago that they drained and it's it's about as black as your shirt. Really? Yeah. Okay. It's a got a lot of rich rich soil. Like you you get in Illinois here the the wet or eastern your, part of Illinois. Your here. potato digger has a blade and it goes to the ground usually about eight inches deep and it'll lift up those rows and shake off the dirt. And it has different separation chains to basically separate the potatoes out mainly potatoes but you'll get you'll get some dirt pods and a lot of stuff you don't want and that has to be picked out later okay so what are these potatoes going to be made into uh, these potatoes are going to be potato chips and these potatoes are being dug where the potatoes being dug right now will be potato chips in 48 hours cool. you have a YouTube channel don't you yes I do it's called tractor man PJ you can search me on YouTube and you'll find me in different aspects of potatoes so if you guys are interested in learning more about potatoes, you can go check him out. But uh, they just started harvesting the potatoes. What do you say we go check out the process? So what's he about to do? Uh, he's about to take four rows and dump them in the middle of these other four rows so that when the harvester comes along, he can pick them up and dump them in the truck. How many pounds of potatoes come off of an acre? Normally a good yield is 300 to 200 bags an acre, and one bag of potatoes is 100 pounds. Okay, then how much is 100 pounds worth, approximately? 
about, about nine dollars. Yeah, a good price is about eleven dollars a bag usually. Okay. You saw the rollers on top of the wind rower. Yep. We don't have those. We have them for our digger. We don't always run them, but what that's supposed to do, as they roll, the chain comes through, and they're, they're rolling, and the chain comes. It's supposed to push the potatoes down and not leave so many forces out in the field. Either left over that aren't going down through. It's mm -hmm. kind of like a because basically a potato digger relies on in between the sprockets. It skips every because there's a link in the whole chain. Mm -hmm. And it pushes the chain up and it relies on just shaking and sheer gravity so for the potatoes to shake off okay. that's why there's kind of a happy medium between having dead dead vines and real healthy vines because if they hold on to potatoes real good you'll throw a lot out and like this clump it shook off pretty much all the potatoes and they're kind of dead but they're just holding on enough to where you won't have a problem with rot okay so that was the wind rower. Looks like they're about to fire up the harvester. Let's go check out that process. Oh, the melon. Where are they? From previous. Yeah, they must have been like volunteers, huh? Huh.
How do you like them taters? So as the material moves to the rear of the machine, there's a fan over there that blows air to throw the chaff out the back. Now that's a winner. Now they're all done washing the potatoes for the day, but we're gonna go see what they do after it's harvested. So we got the truck backed up here. What is it actually scrub the outside of the, the dirt off of the out of the eye? Okay. Yeah, it rolls them around and as they come in it kind of pushes them out. Yep. Forces them out. Just brushes. Scrap them clean. Yeah. There are the potatoes that we just saw harvested, all cleaned and washed. So once they're all in these bins, what happens next to them? They'll truckle back up here and they'll be loaded out here and scaled to a certain amount of weight they want and then sent to the Wherever factory. it needs to go? Yep. Cool. Because that conveyor, it has a computer on it to where it can actually sense, like, it can give you a, a rough reading of how many pounds is on the truck. But then they have a, a single axle scale. Where's that at? That's out that way, and they'll weigh each scale, or I mean, each, each, truck. Scale, each axle. So that is the process of harvesting potatoes. The trucks are headed out, they're fully loaded, and the potatoes are going to become chips within 24 to 48 hours. So I just want to give a quick thank you to John and Will for inviting me down here to film. And I want to give a quick thank you to JMR Farms as well for allowing us to come out and film their harvesting process. So with that, thanks for watching this video, guys. Be sure to check out all of our other videos. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And don't forget to check us out on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and Snapchat. All how farms work. And don't forget to activate the notification bell as well as check the box to receive notifications for when we upload new videos. We'll see you next time.